I found that I was rushing through my baths. And this is just no good because, you know, a girl needs time to relax. So I made myself a bathtub reading rack, complete with cup holder, well, wine glass holder, really. And it's cherry, hardwood, beautiful wood to work with. It's varnished to heck. It's really smooth, looks like something you'd see in a boat. Nice. It's got a magazine reading rack. It's actually got several settings. It's got hardcover, softcover, romance novel. And uh, these little wiry bits hold the book open and the, at the page that you're on, which in my case happens to be trouble-free transmission and suspension. That's really, oh gosh, I'll just have to save that for later. Well, anyway, this is a great thing to make. It's a really good gift, actually, for somebody who's a little tense, perhaps. Now, hardwoods are a bit new to me, but I love them, and I'll, I'll show you why. So I'm just gonna put this back for now. Oh yeah, and check this out. It's got railings on the bottom so it doesn't fall off, you know, so you can't hit it and then it goes flying. And see this? That's a rare earth magnet. And that's there to, to lock onto the side of the tub on the other side. So depending on whether you have a freestanding kind of a claw foot unit or the kind of bathtub that's against the wall, your measurements are going to be a little bit different. But first let's talk about the wood. Hmm. That's for later. This is cherry. Look at it. Okay, that board was completely flat two days ago, but I've been storing it, you know, in a moist environment, and it twisted horribly. So now I have to go and plane it all on the corners to get it to lie down. I had to do the same thing with this board because I left it too long. So if you're going to buy cherry, which is what this is, don't leave it, use it right away, or clear coat it with water-based urethane so that it's sealed. Okay, just a little tip, because this is a lot of work to get the twist out of a board like that. So you go over here. And the other thing is try to use hardwood that's indigenous to your area, because if you buy mahogany, it's a very stressed kind of lumber, and even though mahogany's great and it would look good, it's endangered, so it's a good idea not to use that stuff. So here's my beautiful cherry, and it's all figured, which means there are kind of iridescent patches all through it, so it's going to look really pretty when it's made up. Okay, now, to make it look a little fancier than a normal board, we'll bullnose it. See this kind of an edge? That's called a bullnose, and you use a router to do that, and routers are the best fun a girl can have on an average evening. Well, maybe second best. Okay, it's got a sock on it because I lost the exhaust bag, so that works just fine. It blows the sawdust out. But all these things do is they, the, this little blade turns in a, in a circle and cuts the wood into a pretty pattern. See all the different router bits you can get? You can get you, that's a chamfer bit. This is a cove. There's the bull nose, which I have installed. So it's just having a router is going to just, your self-esteem is just going to go way up there. Um, so you want to clamp the board down. Now this happens to be, there's a million different routers in, in the world, but this happens to be a plunge router. You have to push it down to make it go. Some of them are stationary. And once you have the bit that you want installed, you just put on your ear gear and your eye gear, clamp the board down, and work counterclockwise around the outside edge of the board. And that's because the blade is spinning clockwise. It's a, it's a little hard to figure out, but basically one way you'll, it'll want to flip out, so you have to go counterclockwise so that the blade sucks in against the board. So I'll just clamp the board down. They say that in order to relax, you have to want to relax. But most of us are so busy with our lives, we don't know how to relax. So it's hard to want to do something when you really don't have a clue how it's done. Unless you think back to being a teenager. Okay, see I had a bump there? So I have to do that over again. The, the mistake that most beginner router, routerers make is that they don't go fast enough, so you just have to just work with confidence. Close enough. Okay, now I'm going to do this side. Get rid of the cord. Oh, 
Okay. Um. <laughs> the sock is clear. This should be in the sock. So something's up with the with my exhaust situation. Okay. Look. Um. What, can just bear with me for a second. That really shouldn't have happened, because. Yeah. Yeah. There's the trouble right there. There. See that there. That's a plugged duct right there. Okay, so, well, anyway. You know, this sock is not having a very good day, really. <laughs> it's just. Sock's having a better time now. Wasn't getting much action over on the router. So I was just sanding this corner where it was a bit lumpy because I kind of bumped the router. So you can clean that up pretty quickly. And the whole surface has been sanded with 220 grit sandpaper. If you want to go crazy and have a baby fine finish, you can go to up to 600 grit. It's really, it's like hardly even sandpaper anymore. It's just like kind of a rough cloth, but it makes it really smooth. There are a few little pock marks in the very middle of the wood, but they just add character. So I'm going to fill them. So. But before I do any filling, I want to cut the trim. Okay, so I've already cut these two little bits that, that, that work as the rails that go underneath on the one side. And I'm going to cut the top bit now that goes zinging across the front to hold books and candles and everything in place. And then we'll cut through this to make the wine glass, the ergonomic wine glass pathway. So I'll just make a mark there. I'm just eyeballing it right now. I'll center it up later. And there, and then you gotta get out your old miter box. This is a real kind of hacked up version, but all they are is they give you 45 degree angles and a 90 degree angle to help you. Because if you try to eyeball this and cut it on that angle, it's, you'll just be frustrated. So you line the mark up with the fl floor with the mark on the floor because it's an angle and it's hard to eyeball it properly unless you've lined that little mark up like that and that way you'll get the right angle with your saw. So you can hold it uh, at one end, I didn't give myself much room there, and then clamp it at the other end so that it's not going to walk around on you. And most people recommend using a back saw with a miter box. It's a saw that has a spine all along one side to keep it rigid, but I find this little Japanese model saw works just fine, so watch this. Okay, that's one end. See, that's not so bad. It leaves it a little bit rough, but I can sand that out, and I'm going to have to fill th this oak because the pores are really open, and they tend to, they take the finish badly, the urethane at the end. So I'll find my other mark and cut it, lining it up again with the mark that's on the floor. Oh, that's the wrong angle. It's this one. That's easy to do for me. Okay, so clamping and cutting. See, that's just stupid. I put too many curves. See, there's like a triple curve in my wine glass holder trajectory path thing. So what I want to do is take that down a bit. So I do this, this little bulbous thing. And it's going to go right here. It's just a single kind of curve. Because look, when you pick up a glass, there's a sort of a sweep. But there's not this. <laughs> That's just dumb. I was just, I was, I was hot dogging. Never do that. So I want to cut it right here. Here's the trick though. I'm going to cut it with a jigsaw. Now the jigsaw, think about it, the blade goes ee, 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 and it tears up the fibers of the wood. So if you do it face up, it'll look bad on the surface. So you want to cut upside down when you're jigsawing so that the good side is saved and the bad side has a little bit of tear out. It's going to be awkward. Also, this is a real 3D aptitude situation because it goes like this here. Oh, and here's another thought. Remember the edge of this bathtub, the, the, it has sort of three inch sides. So really, I have to account for that. 
So my wine glass, I've got to set that in a bit. And then I'm just going to make marks, because I've got to flip this baby so that I can work from the other side. So I'll make these marks here and here. And then flip it over and trace my little design. Okay, this is got to go. You flip it over because otherwise you get it the wrong shape. Okay, and I'll just slide these babies in under here to balance it while I clamp it. So, where are those marks? There. So now I can trace it and then jigsaw it and, and I should get a fairly clean cut that shows on the other side. Time. Okay, everybody's just giving up on me today. So now I can insert my blade right in that little hole, and then I'm off to the races making that arc. I'm probably going to bump the heel of my, the plate of my jigsaw into this clamp, so I'm going to have to rearrange it at some point. Okay, well, I've done better. No, really. <laughs> I probably should add a little of this. It would have relaxed me. But it'll, it, you know, it's not too bad. It'll sort of, it's not going to spill, okay? I bust though, so be careful. All right, so now see the tear out I told you about? See how it's all frizzy, like, like little fuzz bits? That looks bad, okay? So we'll be sanding that. And then I have to flip it over, and I'm going to sand all around this end grain, too. This is really messy, man. I tell you, I panicked there. OK, look, it's, it's going to take a lot of sanding to fix that. It's all kind of hacked up. But that's OK. I'll get it eventually. It's just, but that looks nice there, huh? That's, that's sort of sweet. Remember how your grandmother used to say, idle hands are the devil's tools? Well, what your grandmother didn't say is that sometimes the devil gets involved with busy hands too. So when faced with deciding whether you're incompetent or just being toyed with by a nefarious underworld presence, I think it's better to blame the root of the problem, your grandmother who was clearly a troublemaker herself, or she wouldn't have been such an authority on the devil. Okay, <laughs> rotary tool madness. I just kind of cleaned up this bad circle that I did with the rotary tool, so it looks really good. That is the nice thing about working with cherry is it smells like beeswax as you sand. It's just a great wood. I'm liking it. All right, so that looks pretty good, right? The next step is putting the copper reading stand in place. Now, I used refrigerator tubing, my favorite material in the world. This stuff's kind of hard to find. It's 3 16 of an inch outside dimension. It's really skinny, but it's extremely malleable. So you can cut it with a hacksaw if you want to, or you can use a tube cutter. That's my favorite thing to use. And you just slap that baby on there. Slap that baby. And then turn it a few times until it breaks. And it's hard to find it, as I said, 3 16 but you can maybe find quarter inch, and that'll do the trick. And then you have to bend it into a ridgy pattern, like that one over there. If um, You know how they make like ridges in metal, um, like ridged metal roofing and stuff? The ridges are there to, to give it well, rigidity. Maybe that's where that word came from. If you just hold it like this, it's just really bendable. So as soon as you start putting ridges into it, it, it strengthens it. That's why they build um, snaky serpentine lines into bridges, because they're trying to get the bridge to not fall down in an earthquake, for example. OK, so I'll just sort of make a helter-skelter pattern here. And the length sort of, well, it's a bit long probably, so I might have to adjust that. And then it looks a bit wacky too. So 
I'll try to match it a little bit. I wasn't really paying attention, was I? Just like in high school. OK, well, you get the idea. Then once you have it to the right shape, which will probably take me a while now, um, you can attach smaller wire, which makes the hold downs for the pages, right? So you just coil it around the outside here. When it comes to mounting this thing, on my original prototype, I tried this about a billion ways. This is it. You see, that's a really unimaginative wine glass holder right there. So then I tried a snaky one and then it busted. I even had a square one. So for this, I tried hammering two nails up through the bottom and then I just stuck them on, but they split the wood out, so that's no good. Then I tried cutting the heads off two other nails. And I'll just tell you, it works better when this thing is closer together. It's much more rigid. Okay, that's going to hold the book a lot better. So the best thing to do, though, is just drill two 3 16 inch holes and then sink that baby right in there like that. That was my final decision. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then when I'm done that, I can flip it over, attach the magnets and the rails, and then my little special additional thing, which is a pen holder, because I always like to underline the juicy bits. If you're reading about transmission, you'll know what I'm talking about. The best thing about a bathtub reading tray is that its use involves several essential elements of relaxation. Warm water, bath oil, candlelight, and wine, and either the goosebumps of a romance novel's blundering kisses, or the spicy tickle of a great article on auto repair. And I'm going to put that right about there. Then walk away, people, and let it set it up. Now, if I clear coated this whole thing to start off with to save the board from warping, that would have been smart because it's going to be awkward for me to clear coat around all these little, you know, things that I put on here. But it'll go okay. You just take your time. Also, if you don't have enough light in your bathtub area, you can just use an open candle, or you can maybe go with this little. I just made it out of copper. It's it shields you, it's like a footlight. Because otherwise you've got the candlelight in your eyes and you're trying to read across it. So now I need to clear coat this and I'm going to give it three whole coats of water-based urethane so that it really builds up. Because you really want the board sealed, man. Because even all around the little things that I put on. Because if you don't seal it, it'll start to warp in the moist environment of the bathroom. Oh, speaking of a moist environment. <laughs> it's really warm today. OK, clear coat. OK, I've got one layer of clear coat on. And what that tends to do is raise the grain of the wood a bit so it gets a bit bumpy. So I've just got some 320 sandpaper, and I'm taking those little bumps down so it gets very fine. You can do that between every coat if you want that real mirror finish. OK, so pretty neat, eh? It's pretty. It's going to look great. It's going to have its little wine glass holder. I'm loving this. Got to put a little magazine in it. That's what I thought they were when I was little. I thought they were eens, and they were all magazines. Okay, pretty. Okay, now bathtub trays are an art form, and there's somebody who's doing this way better than me, and that would be David Hoekstra. He believes that the necessary should be beautiful, and the beautiful should be necessary. Now look, is that not the most precious bathtub tray you've ever seen? It's called duck surfing a wave. Do you love the rubber ducky? OK, and there's a, the, the bathtub tray is actually kind of movable for, you know, just interest. The candles, it's got two beverage holders if you want a mixture, or if you've got somebody else in the tub with you. In which case, if you do, what the heck are you wasting your time reading for is my question. So. This is the most interesting gift you could possibly ever give a loved one or a relative. So, you know, don't hold back. Do your own design. Go mental. Have fun. Now I'm going to put some ice in that tub and get in it. German poet philosopher Johann Wolfgang von Goethe probably had a bathtub reading tray himself because he once wrote, he is happiest, be he king or peasant, who finds peace in his home.
Von Gooden knew that the best way to get some peace is to lock the bathroom door, soak in a hot tub with a good book, and not get out until you're good and mellow. Or pruny, whichever comes first. 